Hello Matrix and welcome to the fourth video on statistics brought to you by the Answer Series. In this video we will look at histograms, frequency polygons and ogives. For all three of these graphs we will use class intervals. For the histogram and the frequency polygon we use the frequency. For the ogive we use the cumulative frequency. With the histogram you plot everything as a bar and the bars go right up next to each other. For the frequency polygon, you use the midpoint. So the midpoint of this interval is 25, so I plot 25, 2. The midpoint is 35, so I plot 35, 4. And then what I have to do is I have to complete it to the lowest value. So I must connect it down to the x-axis 20 and the upper value at 80. So you must complete that frequency polygon. In both of these two, your modal class is the one that has the highest frequency. With the ogive, what we use is the cumulative frequency. So you add as you go up. So when you've got two, it's just two. But then when you add another class interval, you've now got two plus four, which is six. Then you've got plus eight, then plus 15, all the way to the end. And that last number must always be the sum of all the frequencies. When you plot your ogive, you plot the highest value so you plot 30, 2, and 40, 6, all the way up to 80, 45. In the ogive, you have to ground it to the smallest value. So you have to ground down to the point, in this case, of 20. If we look at skewness in all of these, with the histogram and the frequency polygon, it's completely symmetrical if there's the same on either side of your modal class. If it's more spread out to the right of the modal class, it's skewed to the right. If it's more spread out to the left of the modal class, it's skewed to the left. In the ogive, if you go up quickly in the beginning and then slow down, it's skewed to the right. If you go up slowly in the beginning and then speed up, it's skewed to the left. Example number one goes over two slides. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. I want you to go back one slide. I want you to try this example and then we'll do it together. So there's the first slide. And there's the second slide. So pause the video and see what you can do. The first question is to identify the modal class of this data. The modal class is the one that is the highest. So it goes from 50 to 60. 1.2.1, complete the cumulative frequency column. So it's 1, then you add the 7, then you add the 13, all the way up until you get a total of 55. The next question asks you to draw an ogive or the cumulative frequency graph. Remember we plot the maximum value, so it's 30, 1, 40, 8, all the way up to 100, 55. We must ground it to the lowest value. So we must ground it to 20. And an ogive is never drawn with a ruler. It is always drawn freehand with a smooth curve. Question 1.3 says to you, they're going to give fines to any motorist whose speed exceeds 66 kilometers per hour. So what I do on my ogive is I go up from 66 kilometers per hour and I go across. How many motorists do I get? 44. But they talk about the speed exceeding that. In other words, it's the motorists who are going faster than 66 kilometers per hour. There are 55 motorists in total. 
44 going at a speed of 66. In other words, how many are going more than that? There are 11 motorists. Example number two, I want you to pause the video. I want you to try this yourself and then we'll do it together. Question 2.1 asks you to determine the total number of food items ordered from the menu. Well, my top value is 140. So there were 140 food items. 2.2 asks me to get the modal class. Now the modal class is the one that has the most numbers in it. So that's going to be on my ogive where it's got the highest difference between the two values. And the biggest gap is there. So my modal class is 20 to 30. 2.3, how long did it take to order the first 30 food items? So I go across from 30 items, go down to the time, and it took 20 minutes. 2.4, how many food items were ordered in the last 15 minutes? Well, I go up from 45 minutes, which is the last 15 minutes, and I go across. I get approximately 126. The top number is 140. At that point, I've got 126, which means there were 14 food items ordered in the last 15 minutes. 2.5 asks you to determine the 75th percentile. So I take 75% of 140 numbers and I get 105. So I go across from 105 and go down to get the time and I get 37 minutes. 2.6 asks for the interquartile range. Now remember the interquartile range is the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. The upper quartile is in fact the same as the 75th percentile because the upper quartile, quartile is divided into quarters, so into 25%. So your upper quartile I have already. My lower quartile, I take 25% of 140 and I get 35 if I go across from there, I get approximately 22, so my interquartile range is 15. You should now understand these concepts. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.